Hello and welcome to Dad Got This. And today we are outside in the blazing Florida heat. And today we are going to make something not from Florida, but from North Carolina, some pulled pork. Let's get to it. The first thing we need is pork. This is a giant seven pound, giant to me, pork shoulder, Boston butt roast. It is a bone-in pork shoulder. I always smell and make sure they smell fresh. The thing I absolutely love about doing pulled pork is there's not much you have to do to it, really. We're gonna mix up a little injection to really keep it North Carolina. This is a very popular drink up there. This is cheer wine. It is a cherry-based soda. So we're gonna take some of this. And we're gonna take some of my daughter's juicy juice apple juice, because this is the only apple juice I happen to have in the house. Very high-end recipe here. Get yourself a little injector. We'll give it a little stir. And we are just gonna start injecting this puppy all throughout. This is gonna give it a little bit of extra moisture, a little bit of extra flavor throughout the cook. You can see it kinda plumps up and pokes out as we go through and do this. Careful to put too much in it will squirt on you. That should be good. You will get some leakage. Just clean that up. We're gonna use some good old fashioned yellow mustard as a binder. It's just gonna help our spices stick. It really was not gonna affect the flavor of your pulled pork at all. Give it a shake so you don't get that yellow or that watery stuff that I just got. And I think since uh, spices don't really like to stick to fat that much, and bark doesn't, so I'm gonna do this uh, fat side down. There's enough fat in this where I think all the fat's gonna render through no problem at all. Have I mentioned it's hot in Florida? For the rub, I decided since we are using a cherry flavored soda, in our injection, and we're gonna use this later in our barbecue sauce. Why not use a cherry cola rub? I found this at my local Walmart. Wasn't very expensive. Figured we'd give it a try. Everything I have seen from all of the professional fancy barbecue people, they always sprinkle up high to get a nice even coating. Now, this is going to be our presentation side, so we're gonna flip this over, do the other side first, flip it back for presentation side which means I need more gloves. See if I can do a one-handed flip. Ooh, so I can keep a clean hand. So I now have a clean hand for the rub and a flip hand. Now this has sugar, salt, paprika, spices, including coriander and allspite, spite, tart, cherry, maltic acid, natural and other cherry flavors, a bunch of beet powder for color, cola flavor. Now, I'm not gonna add any extra salt because it says it has salt, and I have done that before, and I have ruined barbecue with too much salt. We're gonna go heavy, because I think we can do that on this. We wanna get a nice coating all the way all over this meat. Over the sides, don't forget the sides. Rub is applied. Time to set up the smoker. Sweet, sweet, sweet. That's what we're going for on this cook. We are gonna use our sweet wood blend from Kona. These are pellets that I recommend for the Ninja Wood Fire Grill. They work great. I will be doing a pellet test in the coming future where I'm gonna test these pellets, the Ninja pellets, and like the cheapest pellets I can find and see if there is any difference. So far, I haven't found any difference in 
how well they work. I mean, there's flavor in the taste of the flavor because there are different flavors of pellets. But as far as how well they work, I haven't noticed any difference between the Ninja pellets and these. But I'm gonna see if there's any difference in the cheapest pellet I can find versus these. These, there is a link down in the description for. It is an affiliate link. If you use it, it helps me out and I would greatly appreciate it. Really easy to set up the Ninja wood fire. There's a hopper on the side. This has some leftover pellets. I never use leftover pellets. I always dump and go to fresh pellets. Fill it to the top. Give it a little shake. I give it the shake to give it some air around the pellets. I feel like I get a better burn that way. Right in the side there. We're gonna use the grill grate that came with the wood fire grill. It's a nice ribbed grill grate. It's nonstick, works really well. It just sits right here. Do not forget to put in your grease strip pan. Now, I'm definitely gonna line this one with some tin foil for this cook. I am expecting a lot of grease and drippings over this cook. This just inserts right in the back. We're gonna set this on the smoker setting. And we're gonna do this at 300 degrees. I'm guessing three to four hours for this cook, so we'll set it for four and hit start. You'll get your little IGN button. That's gonna say it's igniting the coals. When it's all ready, it'll tell you to add food and start the countdown. While that is happening, we have a few things we can do. We're gonna let this just kinda set up and let all of this kinda congeal and really adhere itself to the pork. We'll set this aside. Smoker says it's ready for food. We have one more thing we have to do before we get there. We're gonna go ahead and use a wireless thermometer. You don't have to use this. You can just check it every once in a while. We're gonna cook this to an internal temperature of 200 degrees as our final temperature. But at 170, we're gonna take it out and we're gonna put it in a pan and we're gonna foil cover it. So I have a temperature alert set for 170 and a final temp set for 200 using my meat stick. So we're just gonna go ahead and find uh, kind of the thickest part of the roast that is not touching the bone. Nope, see that's touching the bone. There we go. And we're gonna stick that in there. And this bad boy. Now, I am not gonna make the mistake that I have made before of just 100% trusting the digital thermometer and never checking it and just waiting for it. I'm gonna check this thing on the hour to double check and make sure everything is going well. I have had either lost a Wi-Fi connection, walked too far away, forgot about it, something didn't happen, and I've gone over my target temps. Not gonna happen this time. While this thing is smoking, we need to whip up an amazing sweet, sweet, are you getting the theme here? Coleslaw. In North Carolina, it is like the way to have the sandwich. You take your amazing pulled pork, you do a barbecue sauce on it, and then you mound some coleslaw on top of that on a nice bun, and that is how you eat your sandwich. Well, we need to make some coleslaw. Let's whip some up. This is the easiest coleslaw you will ever make. Rinse yourself off a nice head of cabbage. Get rid of the outer leaves that don't look so good. Chop it in half. Do a better job than I did chopping it in half. And then get yourself a little V and cut that bad boy out. There is actually a grain to a cabbage and we are gonna cut against that grain. Take these, put them in a big bowl. Do the same thing to the other giant half of your cabbage. Break them up a little. Now you basically have a big bowl of shredded cabbage. We're gonna take a ton of sugar, one and three quarter cups to be exact. Mayonnaise. I'm a fan of Duke's. You can use whatever mayonnaise you like. We need a cup. I do a little spatula here to make sure I get all my mayo. 
a couple tablespoons of yellow mustard. That looks like one. That looks like two. Contrary to what my Italian grandmother believed, these are for mixing foods, not for chasing me around with the kitchen and trying to hit me with. Hit with a little bit more of that. Sometimes there just is no substitute for getting in there with your hands. That's why you can also break up any big chunks you might have missed with the knife. Really make sure you are distributing everything nice and even. You could eat this right now. I suggest you don't. Stick this in the fridge for a couple hours. It's gonna meld and do all sorts of fun stuff. And it's gonna be even better in a couple hours. I mean, it's delicious, but it's gonna be even better. Let's go stick this in the fridge and then we'll go check on our pork. All right, let's whip up a quick barbecue sauce. Throw in a tablespoon of butter, 12 ounce can of cheer wine soda, one cup of brown sugar. Let's throw in two cups of ketchup, a little bit of black pepper, about a tablespoon. How about some smoked paprika? A tablespoon of that. How about some apple cider vinegar? We'll throw in eh, two tablespoons. A pinch of cayenne. You can add as much as you want. Make it as spicy as you want. A pinch is good for my family. No real spice in a pinch. Stir it up. Get it nice and mixed. Now bring it to a boil. Let it simmer for about 30 minutes, and then it'll be nice and saucy. That's it barbecue sauce done. Are you enjoying this video? If so, there are a few simple things you could do that really would help me out. Subscribe if you're not already, give the video a like, and maybe consider hitting the bell. All right, thanks. Our coleslaw is chilling in the fridge. Our barbecue sauce is simmering on the stove. It's been an hour. Let's go ahead and check on this pork. Ooh, that looks good. Now, in this bottle, my wife's planter bottle, do not tell her. I have cheer wine. This is what she uses just to water her plants. Mine broke, so I've borrowed it. I'll clean it, don't worry. I have cheer wine, and I'm going to spray the pork with some cheer wine. We'll do this every hour. And now we continue to wait. We are ready for a hopper refill. My hopper is just about done with smoke pellets. I need to get a little scooper so I can scoop some fresh pellets in there and I'll show you how to reignite for when you do a refill of your hopper. For me, my little Asian soup spoon works perfectly. One thing you do not want to do is spill these pellets onto your patio floor. Concrete, pavers, doesn't matter. They get wet, they stain, not fun. So. Take yourself a little scooper, carefully. Open pellet hopper, scoop in. Repeat until full. Anyone that gets away, make sure you do not let on the flow. To reignite your pellets, all you have to do is hit the wood fire button for three seconds. Hold it. One, two, three. It'll start doing that. That means it's relighting the pellets. You should get smoke again rather soon. That's it. Really simple. I know people say that the hopper is too small and it doesn't last long enough, but what did that take? Like 45 seconds? I just got my 170 degree warning from my meat stick. Let's check on the pork. Ooh, nice crusty looking bark. She's looking good. I think we are ready to wrap. I do not recommend you doing this. I just have latex gloves. I have no heat protection under these. My hands are kind of dead over the years of cooking with heat and stuff like that. I should be able to grab this thing. We'll find out. I'm not gonna be able to grab this thing. I just found out. Holy moly, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna to need to get some uh, heat protection gloves. Hold on. Now, with these bad boys, you can grab anything. 
Boom. That sucker's looking good. Let's go ahead and uh, just do some quick probing and checking. All right, we are in the 150s, like in the 170s, 180s at the tops, but as you get closer down to the middle, we get into the 150s. We may have to reposition. I'm gonna take and pour the rest of this little can of cheer wine I have. What was in here? Just a little bit at the bottom, not a whole bunch. And we are gonna tent this bad boy off. And we're gonna let it go for another hour or two hours until we reach about 200 degrees internal temperature and everything is super tender. And at this point, we don't care about smoke, so we don't need to worry about checking the hopper or anything like that. I hope this fits under here. I've encountered a problem. My pan is too big with the pork in it. I'm going to have to do this wrapped with no pan. I'm just gonna go for it. Ah. Is this perfect? No. Is it gonna work? Probably yes. The foil wrapping around it is gonna accelerate the cook and that's all that we care about. It's gonna keep the moisture in. We're relatively sealed. I think we'll be okay. I'm a little confused. The pork fit unwrapped. All right, that's pretty close. I think we're gonna be okay. I'll come check on it in a little bit. We are bang on four hours. Let's go ahead and give it a check. By the way, my meat stick died again. It's been doing that on me. I don't know if I'm just not charging them enough. I think I am. I've been having some problems with that meat stick lately. I do have a new wireless thermometer that I'm supposed to test out here coming up soon. So if you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed. That video will be coming out soon, but we can just do the good old, oh, we are bang on 200 right there. 200, oh, we nailed it. Nailed it. And now we have to let this rest for at least 35 to 45 minutes. You really wanna give meat that has been roasted, smoked, any kind of slow cooked meat, you wanna give it time to rest. It's gonna give the juices time to redistribute through the meat, otherwise, you're just gonna lose all that juice to the cutting board and it's not gonna be as juicy a piece of meat. It's just gonna be juice everywhere else. So I will see you guys in about 45 minutes for shredding, assembly, and eating. The best part. This has rested. It is time to get it ready to pull. Ah, it is still blazingly hot. Bone pulls nice out. And then we are just gonna shred this by hand, which it is easily doing. Now I probably could have drained some of the liquid if I wanted. Don't think I had to. A nice way to give it a kick of extra flavor is just to sprinkle in a little bit extra of your rub after you're all done and you shredded it and mix it in. Take a little chunk here. Ooh. That is good. Smoky, sweet, not too salty. That is honestly the best pulled pork I have ever made. I made a lot of pulled pork. It's the best one. Ooh. It's sandwich time. Hi. I'm using my absolute favorite rolls. These are Martin's potatoes rolls. Some lovely pork. These are cheer wine cola barbecue sauce we made. Coleslaw, it's been sitting in the fridge. Getting all happy. We're gonna dump a massive amount on top. Top bun, more gloves all over the place. Wet sloppy sandwich. Here we go. <laughs> mm. 
That is fantastic. Oh my God. I was like the best sandwich ever. Ever, ever. You gotta make it. You gotta make the pork. You gotta make the coleslaw. You gotta make the barbecue sauce. All of it. Super easy to make. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna get yourself a Ninja Wood Fire Grill, I got links down below. I got coupons, I got all sorts of stuff. They are affiliate links, they do help me out. It's appreciated if you use them. I'll throw links down to all this stuff that I bought that you can try out down below. Amazon links, affiliate links, same deal. Thank you very much for watching. Dad may be eating the greatest sandwich he has ever made, but Dad doesn't do outros, so that's it. Bye. Mm. And how could I forget? You gotta wash it down with a wonderful cheer wine. Ice cold. Oh man. This is a meal. There's enough here to feed like 100 people or like 12 really hungry dads. <laughs>